Hi, in this lesson, we're going to look at how loops can be implemented in our Python graphics programs. Let's go. Using loops in Python graphics is exactly the same as using them in our console programs. We can define a for loop as shown here, where the number of times to repeat is noted inside parentheses. Indented inside, we list all of the actions we want to be completed when we run the loop. In this program, we can easily add more circles to the screen by altering the range of the loop. Let's take a look at an example to see this in action. We're going to complete this exercise where we're being asked to draw five boxes that are spaced along the X and Y axes. Before we get to writing our program, let's take a minute to plan the positions of each box. The position of the first box is going to be at 0, 0. The position of the second box is going to be at box width, comma, box height. The position of the third box is at box width times 2, comma, box height times 2. The fourth box is at box width times 3, box height times 3. And the fifth box is going to be at box width times 4, box height times 4. Seeing all the locations together, we can see that the locations are increasing linearly, and we can rewrite the first two x and y locations using values of 0 and 1, because anything times 0 is 0, and anything times 1 is equal to itself. Let's take a look at this in the editor. When we start this program, we see that we're setting the size of the canvas, and we're saving the height and width in height and width variables, and using the width and the height of the canvas to size each of our boxes. So we know we want five boxes, we're just taking the entire width so that the boxes go from all the way from the left side of the canvas to the right side with five boxes and from the top to the bottom with five boxes. So let's implement our for loop and we know we want five boxes to be drawn. So we'll start by saying box equals rectangle and use the width and the height to size our box. Now let's set the position and we want to use an x coordinate which is going to start at 0 and a y coordinate which is going to start at 0. So let's use those to start and just add our box and see what happens. Now we have one box being drawn at x um, and y positions of 0 but every time a new box is drawn, they're just being drawn to the same coordinates of 0, 0, 0. So there's five squares all stacked on top of each other right here in this corner. We want to change the coordinate locations of x and y every time the loop runs through. So let's say that we want x to increase by the box width value each time it runs through. And we want the y value to increase by box height. Let's see how this works. Oh, got a typo. So now we see that the locations of our shapes are all being positioned correctly using the x and y coordinates that are changing every single loop, every single iteration of our loop. Now there is a quicker and more eff efficient way to get these locations where we don't need x and y. Instead of x, we know that we want to take the width of the box and multiply it by 0 the first time, 1 the next time, 2 the next time, 3 the next time, 4 the next time. And those values are being saved in this variable i. So if we take the box width times i on the initial run through, i is 0, so this will be 0, which is exactly what we set our x coordinate to previously. Then on the for this next box, i is going to be 1. 1 times the box width is just the width of the box. So if we move over one width of the box, this is where we want our first our next box to start. Then it will be 2 and we'll move 2, then it will be 3 and we'll move 3. And we can do the same thing for the height of our box location. So when we run this, we get the exact same setup using the value i that is being given from this for loop. 